Hello everybody, welcome to another Bedroom Guru. Sorry it's been a while, but I've been a very busy girl. This author stuff takes a lot of work, you know that. I've just had to um, reread and go through everything after the copyright, which is really exciting. And um, I've met this wonderful person who has obviously brought to me from the Angel Realms, Verity Rock. And um, we've got this most wonderful cover for my book, Me, Myself and I, Diary of a Psychic. So everything's going ahead as planned. The only frustration is it takes a very long time. I have so many messages and emails asking me when the book's going to be out. Um, it's going to be taking most probably another 10 months, unfortunately. So hopefully it's worth waiting for. I'm sure it is. I'm so excited um, because I've not only given it to people with ME, the book to read, um, but people that are inspired through angels. I've I've given it to sceptics who believe in nothing at all. And I've had such wonderful feedback and great reviews. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'll keep you updated as the progress goes on for the book. But that's what's kind of been taking up all my time. Um, and of course, enjoying lovely times with my friends as well. Now, I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today and it came up i've just recently been to a wonderful festival at blackpool sands locally here and um, i've met up with friends already have and met some new friends and i ended up talking to someone about empaths and weirdly enough i then got two emails over the weekend asking about um situations in their life and i thought oh my god they're such empaths now i say quite lightly because i know what an empath is to people it's because you're an empath and I thought my god I've never actually described what an empath is we kind of use it as a term that everybody should understand and know but what is an empath well I'm gonna let you know empaths are people um, I suppose another you know flouncy sort of way would be to describe them as light workers um, but not so much in my capacity. My capacity as a light worker and empath is to obviously share my knowledge, help people get over their problems, help them live their life path, um, introduce them to spiritual knowledge and spiritual living, blah, 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 blah. And obviously prove life's eternal um, and bring spirit people to people to let them know they're not alone. So I've got quite a strong, important lesson um, or uh, to impart or perhaps I've got a very strong duty um, to the divine that I have to obviously you know do my light work in a more full, not forceful but a more um, prolific way if you like you know have a profile where I can actually help people and, and hopefully people listen to me which I hope you do on it I hope you don't go oh my god when the notif notification bell goes on um, so, you know, we all have our different paths. However, there are empaths that just literally lead their life without any spiritual input at all. And they're the people that I want to talk about. And what I would like for you to do is when you actually listen to this, see how much of it makes sense to your personality, your traits and your lifestyle. Um, and then you'll know you're an empath. There are very, very good things if you're an empath that you'll experience in life. But unfortunately, there's a lot of lows as well. Um, so it's how you deal with the lows, it's how you get, you know, through this, being an empath. Now, let's, I don't know whether to start the good or bad. Shall I give you the good news first or the bad news? I'll mix it. Shall I mix it? It's going to be a lot more easy, easier in delivery. Empaths are born as um, people that are very, very sensitive to people around them, to situations um, and to anything that happens in the energy around them. We are, I'm going to say we now because obviously I'm an empath as well. We are born to care about other people. We are born to feel their feelings, to completely put ourselves in their, in their boots, if you like, um, and try and understand them as best we can. Most empaths will spend their childhood perhaps even being bullied because they always see the good in people they always trust people they always see the brilliant fairy side of everything um, and that leads to people um sensing that we have this this love this vulnerability and so they pounce on it so you could have had um i did for quite a certain amount of time um have some sort of bullying aspect take place um, during your childhood years. You could also have been exposed to abuse. Sometimes empaths that have gone up 
that want to choose experiences come down and unfortunately part of your life experience is to be exposed to people that should love you and nurture you um, but unfortunately they end up abusing our soft sensitive nature so that's one you know i'm kind of doing the good with the bad here we um tend to grow up as i say feeling very very passionate about the planet very passionate about what people do to each other you know you'll find that you can't watch things on the television that are violent or you can't watch anything that's going on with the wars you know um out in in the war zones you'll find that you cannot abide any hurt on children people or animals you tend to find that you connect more with animals and children and innocent spirit um, energies as opposed to, you know, the people that are greedy or tyrannical or material. You tend to not like those sort of people. You will always sense people's emotions and moods. Um, hence why we end up being either full time light workers, as I am, um, or we end up being nurses. I was obviously a police officer. Again, anything to do with public service or anything where we're helping people, either to make them feel better or to heal them, you know, if you're a nurse, then that is normally what our vocation is. Um, sometimes we turn it more scientifically to perhaps, I don't know, marine biology, because we want to save the planet or a vet, but we want to do things to help the people that can't look after themselves or voice their opinions. We love to carry, nurture and look after everybody else. So again, a lot of you will be carers, um, whether that be as a professional capacity or even you end up caring for family members. The biggest problem that we attract, which I obviously hit on with the narcissist videos, is that we tend to find people who have got issues. We tend to be in relationships with people that have got issues. Why do we do this? What we do is, is as empaths, you will not consciously be aware of this, but you will always see the potential and the goodness of the soul within the person. Now, if you've seen my videos about the mouse and the lion, you'll know that within us is our spirit, which is, you know, the, the essence of us, our core self. Um, but then either situations or the heaviness of the base chakras of our soul can change us um, to be nasty people, to be selfish, to be violent, to be whatever we are, to be predators, narcissists, whoever we may be. Um, so we start off pure, but I, I believe that some um, certain aspects of our, our society, our peerage, um, how we grow up, our development, our family can create us to be different animals to what we were when we first came down on the earth plane. Um, and so we see beyond this exterior. So the exterior is perhaps someone that's got a drink problem or an addiction. Um, let's stick with that as, as, you know, one of the problems we may be encountering. And what we do is we see the potential of the beautiful soul within. So we think, my God, they're so lovely. If they could get over this addiction, I can see that they could be a real success and real happy in their life. And so we kind of zone in to the inner core cool being of that person. So everybody else around us is like, are you mental? They're getting drunk every night. What are you doing? But you're thinking, no, because I know if I help this person, they're going to be amazing. Okay, and you endure it, whether you endure it for one year, for your whole life, whatever you do, you endure it because you can see the greater good in them. Um, however, they see that you will give them and supply everything to them. And so they will just take, 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 take. And with you carrying and nurturing um, and, you know, enabling them to do what they do and you're trying to understand it and be love and light, they're thinking, lovely, I can drink as much as I want, you see? So the problem is we do attract predators and we do attract people with issues because we want to save them, we want to rescue them. We are the rescuers and they will trot along and allow us to rescue them as much as, as, much as we want. And that's where the problem lies. So if you find yourself in a relationship where they're either violent, got addictions, got issues, got problems, whatever it may be, unless they want to help themselves, you will never ever rectify or rescue those people, guaranteed. And it took me a long time to learn that little puppy. Um, so what you need to do is walk away. And that's the hardest thing for us to do because we are dedicated, we're loyal, we're loving, we're understanding. And for us to walk away from situations, we don't think, right, I'm going to set this up, I'm going to do this for me, I'm going to do that. You think, oh my God, how are they going to cope? And that is one thing you have to learn in this life as an empath, is to cut it when it's needed. 
So when you're in a situation that is completely draining you, completely, you know, taking everything out of you you possibly can, you've given it all you can, you then have to have the strength to make that cut, make that cut away, whether it's a work situation, a relationship situation, health situation for you, you, you think, no, it's time I look after myself. The problem with us looking after ourselves and putting ourselves first is we see that within us as being selfish, but it's not. And I've also learned that on my travels, on my journey, which you'll obviously read about in my book. So you have to look at things very closely and analyse whether you're being an empath um, in situations and how you can change that. As I say, the beauty of our existence if you like is that we see beauty in everything we are the most loving caring beautiful people that will be there for friends family strangers we're the sort of person that will stop if someone's fallen over at the side of the road we're there if they've broken down we want to help and rescue everybody however that can become unhealthy so when you're looking at situations that are not making you happy you have to see if they are draining your energy your soul energy and whether they are basically taking you your life source away from you once you know that it deep inside it's true that whoever you're trying to help whatever you're trying to do is draining you that is when you have to start making decisions and gaining courage to change that situation it's your life you do what you want with it but we all know if we're happy or not and to have a source of happiness as your first feeling as soon as you wake up is where you need to be if other people are stopping that you need to make change empaths have also got a wonderful ability to connect with the atmospheres so the beauty of what we can do as people um, for ourselves is um, nature for us is our key to charging our batteries and seeing fluidity getting clarity in our minds um, so always make sure that you get away from humans and technology i would say this all the time but it's so important for empaths we we kind of um absorb what is around us you know it's like hairdressers a lot of hairdressers are empaths because they turn out to be counsellors and i have so many people come to me for reading sound bloody knackered so i have to teach them how to do very basic um not blocking very basic protective energies around their energy so they don't absorb all these people's problems and angst that they have um, so by getting to nature, you're charging yourself up, walking woodland in your local park, getting away from it all, take the dog somewhere or do whatever you want to do, a hobby. Lots of empaths love gardening. They love to watch and nurture things grow. So that's something else that they absolutely love to do. Normally very nature orientated things about growth um, or perhaps, you know, youth work, anything that makes you feel yes um, in helping people. You're so an empath. You're so an empath. We don't particularly like to be in the limelight. Um, I've got no choice, <laughs> but I quite like it because I know that I'm working for the greater good. Um, so we tend to hold ourselves back and not put ourselves forward. Again, this can be a problem if you're, you know, you're looking for the ideal job or you're looking for the ideal position or you want to have that particular house. Sometimes we have to own a bit of strength. The only way to do that is to connect with nature, gain the strength of nature. I get it from going down by the sea every day. Um, also, empaths have got the most easiest way of connecting to um, the spirit world, to the angel realms. We are exposed to synchronicity and signs a lot more than normal people because we're sensitive to other frequencies. So if you're getting numerology, if you're getting numbers keep coming to you that are you know repeated, um, if you keep getting a robin come and see you, if you keep getting the same sentence being said by different voices, by different people, there are obviously messages from the divine that are trying to help you. You don't have to meditate, you don't have to get angel cards if you don't want to, you don't have to get right into spirituality, but be aware that because you're an empath, you're sensitive to spirit, you're sensitive to messages from the divine, you're sensitive to the angel realms, you're sensitive to all of the different beautiful divine and celestial frequencies that are there. And so that's what you'll find if you end up going to perhaps a spiritual workshop or into a spiritualist church, you might find your path there because you are way ahead of, of non-empaths, I'll tell you that now. Um, so it is a choice for you if you want to find more peace or happiness. It is a, it is a process where you can take yourself to you know, that spiritual path and, and enlightenment. You can do that yourself through meditation. However, I'm just talking about normal empaths that just live in their lives with their kids, with the job, with their husbands or whatever they're doing. Um, and, you know, trying to understand why it is they keep getting the same problems. Um, and it's because we just want to help everybody. We want rainbows 
unicorns and fluffy fairies everywhere whereas the real world doesn't want that it's not interested it just wants to get on make money and be the best they can which is really sad but hey ho these people out there that want to do that good luck to them um empaths also as i say because they're open to signs and synchronicities they're open to atmospheres so if you walk into a house you'll know if someone's just had a row or you walk into a house and perhaps a baby's been born and you can feel the euphoric feeling of the new baby there we are open to all of that and we're exposed to all of that very very simple exercise for you to do if you find that you're getting drained by people perhaps if you work in a public environment and you and perhaps you work i don't know in um you know a complaints department and you've just got people having a go at you all of the time um then you need to just adopt this it's a very very tiny little thing to do um and i do it sometimes if i know i've got a hard day or i'm perhaps going to be doing something i don't particularly want to do then i get that brick wall up so this is how you do it in the morning um all you have to do is just basically envisage before you get up laying there and imagine I think the best thing to do, I've done this before here, the vision is, is just to start with a big glowing football, if you like, a pink football at the base of your feet. And then imagine that football um, spreading out like chewing gum, like hubba bubba, that's how I used to see it. And then it's basically spreading out like, and then it like thins out like a balloon and comes right the way around your whole physical body until it's airtight at the top. And once you see yourself envisaged in this bubble, you might think, what the hell am I doing? Thinking about a pink bubble. But what you're doing is, is you're creating an intent, um, which is, you may not be aware of what you're doing, but you're sending an intent to your guides, to the, to the divine energies to say, I actually need to be protected from people's energies, attitudes, and their behavior, okay? Um, and then that's all you have to do. And then when you are standing in front of that said person or situation, imagine the pink part of that bubble in front of you as you're talking, then la 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 la, and you're sitting there going, yep, yeah, you can say whatever you want because I'm in my pink bubble and nothing is touching me today. Okay, I almost, I think I've said this before, I almost laugh because they go, oh, I've had this, I've had that, and I think, God, you're so miserable. But then I sit there laughing, going, my God, I'm so not getting any of this. Just carry on blaring because I'm just not absorbing any of it at all. So always remember that pink wall in front of you if you're in a situation in front of a negative person because you'll end up getting part of it and go home feeling exhausted and really paid off. So make sure you do that. The other thing is as well, if you really want to go one step further, and I've said this again in another video before as well, but it's perfect for empaths, is a labradorite. Um, I'm sure there's a picture of it somewhere um, in one of my videos or just Google it. Just think of Labrador with it on the end of it. Um, Labradorite. It's a beautiful, shiny, greeny, turquoisey blue stone with silver threads going through it. And I adore it because it's almost like the colour of my shell that I've got on today. Um, I love, 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 love anything to do with the sea, mermaids, shimmering, blues and greens, so it's a perfect stone for me. Um, what it is, Labradorite is a very good protective stone of people that are vulnerable or are very sensitive to other people's emotions and behaviour. It basically mirrors the intention of the person, so if you're perhaps having a row with someone or having a feud with someone or you've got litigation going on, then you whack that on and anything that is sent towards you through thought process, if someone's got the ump with you or, you know, anything that's coming towards you that you don't, that you think I'm going to have to get really strong for this, it will back, it will bat it back off. It's almost, it's also known as a mirror stone. So it will mirror any negative energy off from you. Perhaps you've got a rubbish neighbour, chuck a Labradorite stone facing them, you know, so it's like a mirror stone. You keep all your negative crap to yourself, love. You know, that's how you do it. It also protects your energy from being drained um, and absorbing anything around you, atmospheres, people, situations. So, and they're also beautiful stone as a necklace pendant, as a ring or an earrings, beautiful, beautiful stone. So have a look at that and treat yourself um, to a Labradorite because they really do um, work. And even if, you know, you're skeptical about crystals, what would it hurt to think psychologically i've got a magic stone on and you're not coming anywhere near me sunshine you know so have a little go at that as well i would embrace being an empath i embrace being an empath because i absorb all the things that are good for me i have got the most beautiful friends around me and if there's anybody that i don't particularly like or someone that i feel is draining me then i 
kind of distance myself politely from them, even if, you know, I have, I've got lovely family members, but even if there's a family member that I'm not too happy about, I just think, yep, there's my pink wall, then get on with it because you've got an attitude I haven't, so it's fine, you know. And politely distance yourself away from those people. You'll find as well, the more you embrace this empath, this loving side of you, the more you'll attract loving people that are also empaths. So you'll you'll end up being surrounded if you work this and honour who you are. You will start having people that are empaths come around you that are willing to love and willing to give and are very kind, compassionate people. And then you think, wow, so am I. So then you find that you're not carrying people anymore. You know, you're not their agony on. You're not the person that's trying to push them to go and sort something out. You're like, God's sake. You know, there's, I call them the yeah, but people. When, you know, they come and offload all their problems to you and you go, well, have you tried that? Yeah, but I can't. Yeah, but. And the yeah, but people are the people that I avoid like the plague. And that's what you need to do. And as I say, by working this beautiful side of being an empath, you ordinarily start attracting friends, um, loved ones or new partners that have got exactly the same energy, this calm, loving kindness that you instantly feel attracted to and think, yeah, you, you're good for me, you know, and it just helps you to get a lot stronger and a lot more focused in life. Um, I think that's kind of about as much as I can say. Empaths like their own their own space, their own time. They like reading, they like um, being very introspective. They like to look at what's going on in their lives and analyze it. Sometimes we overanalyze, which again can be a nightmare. So it's all about healthy balance. It's all about balancing and looking after yourself. And as I say, if there's anything in your life that's troubling you, write it out like I do in a soul journal and analyze it and see if there's anything you can do to change it. And if you can, have the courage to do that. Make the changes to make you happy. Make the changes that don't make you slogging around for everybody else because it's really not healthy. Um, you need to be looking after yourself. Sometimes we don't have a, you know, we don't have a choice. Perhaps we've got parents that need our care. And yes, we shine in that environment. But then if there are things they are they are capable of, let them do that. Encourage them to also have their own strengths. You know, just have a look at every situ situation around you and see what you can and can't do about it. The most important thing is, though, you have to go against your natural empath um, instinct. You have to put yourself first because if you're not strong enough and you don't love yourself enough, you're not going to be any good for anybody else. You're just going to be running on permanent empty. Um, there's more tips and clues, I think, on um, how to maintain this empath life. Um, on I think I'm sure I called the video am I psychic or how do I know if I'm psychic there are also more tips and things like that on there that can help you feel a lot more comfortable in your own skin um, but for the time being I need to take my little babies down for a little rock pool session um, and go and ground myself in that beautiful sea that I can hear very close to me um, and I'm going to leave you with those thoughts if there's anything you want to know about empaths please leave a comment below um, or you know send me an email let me know you're hearing these um, and if there's any different subjects you want to discuss anything that you want questions I'm sorry answers to drop me a question on here or on Twitter or Insta or Facebook um, and I'll by all means do anything I can to answer those I do hope you're enjoying this welcome to the new subscribers as well it's lovely to see more people coming along and having a listen and as I say anything you need an answer on just drop it drop it by me in any way you can through the social media sites. I'll do my best to answer them. So with that, I will love you and leave you, my beautiful little empaths, my little fairy people, and uh, have a big think about what I've just said about and see if it affects you or if you are indeed an empath. Um, you take care now and I'll speak to you again very soon. God bless you. See you later. Bye now.